Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here, continuing this Warlock run. It, this run has shown just what a complicated game Hearthstone can be. The first game we played against the Druid, it was pretty tough. We ended up winning. The second game, it was very complex. It was a really complex board situation. I made the wrong call. I went for the face instead of killing an Ogre Magi. Then my opponent had a swipe, cleared my board, and won. But if he hadn't had the swipe, I would have won. If I had played correctly, I might have won. So it was, it was, it was a tough game. I'm not going to be too upset about it. Cosmore 77, a Paladin, comes along. Paladin, I'm not a big fan of playing it as a Warlock because they keep putting their recruits on the field, and if you don't get your mortal coils, they're hard to deal with. I'm going to go ahead and keep my 3-drop and 4-drop. These are extremely strong. As long as my opponent has a modestly slow start, I'll be fine. Ah, I didn't really want to see my 4-drop, or my 6-drop here. Don't really want to play Soulfire because I actually want to play my cards. Hopefully this just passes... Oh, fuck. Ah, oh, it's like the worst thing. God, that's so frustrating. Well, here I was hoping for my opponent to have a slow start, and he drops the Argent Squire on me. And I might, you might not be asking me, Boris, why are you playing a Bluegill Warrior? Well, the answer is, if my opponent has a fast start, I might as well get him to pop this Divine Shield with my minion. Yes, I'm going down a card, but hopefully the Golem and the Pit Lord will catch me back up. Who plays Elven Archer? Why? 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 What is going on? Why are you playing these terrible... Oh my god, Young Priestess, are you effing kidding me? Ah, oh, god. Well, it's gonna be one of those games, huh? He's, he's got... Seems to have drafted some kind of aggro Paladin deck. Honestly, Paladin's not really my favorite class for aggro. Uh, it seems tough to pull off. Does he actually have a true super champion to back up this aggressive start? He's got a Dread Corsair, so he's going to protect his minions from the wrath of my golem here. Alright, well, you're going to do what you're going to do, I guess, in situations like this. This is awkward, but I have to play the Pit Lord. Which takes 5 damage, so I'm down to 20 health. Then I need to soul fire this pirate. And then I need to kill off one of his minions. So he's already got me down to 18, and he's actually doing fine on cards because of Soulfire and because of the Elven Archer killing Blue Glow Warrior, so I'm not even like doing okay on cards. Unless, of course, my minions can catch me up. The issue, of course, is if he keeps making recruits, I actually am hard-pressed to deal with them effectively. Ah, so now he's going to switch over and kill my stuff. That's good to see. I'm happy to see that because that means he's not... He doesn't, he doesn't feel like he has the right cards to kill me with. I mean, he is facing a 5-6 on turn 4. Never mind a 1-6 on turn 4. That's good. Glad that happened. He's going to go ahead and hit me in the face with that archer. Lame. Oh, lame. Okay, this is actually a really good top deck. Because a 2-7 is much better than a 1-6. Than a we will just... I'm not going to get greedy here. We'll just kill that thing off. And we'll kill off that thing. So I've got a 2-6 with taunt. It's pretty good. A little bit tricky for a paladin to break past that. If he silences it, it'll become a 5-6 again. So he, silence does not work. He needs to kill it. He needs like a truce of a champion or blessing of kings. Well, okay, it's not that difficult, I guess, for a paladin. But he needs one of those things. It is still only turn 5, keep in mind. Like, the, there's so much that happened this game, it feels like we're really late into it. But it is only just now the 5th turn. Unfortunately, he does have a blessing of kings. Fortunately, that's his entire turn. And I will get to kill that thing with an Argent Commander next turn, so I'm fine. 18 health. Oh, with the Paladin with two cards, I'm, I feel like I'm okay. All right, Infiltrator. That'll be good later. But first, we need to kill off his Infiltrator. And finally, this Elven Archer. Avenge the death of my Blue Gill Warrior. So he's got three cards to my four. I'm actually doing fine. Mainly the issue is that my life is low enough that I can't life tap, but I do have this healer. Is he going to hit me in the face? Is he going to go... Yeah, he's going straight for the for the noggin. Okay. Well, let's do the following. First of all, I'm going to play a knife juggler. Now, I'm going to actually play the Farseer first on the off chance that both knives hit the hit the Racketeer. It's just a 1 in 4 chance. Okay, that's not going to happen. So I am gonna, now going to trade away the Defender. So that when I play the Worgen, the knife goes at his face. And we're going to swing. Now, he could, of course, consecrate. If he does, well, then he can go suck a dick. But um, given how terrible the start was, I'm going to have to take some chances. True Super Champion, also good. Not quite as good as Consecration, though, because it's going to take him a couple more turns to kill my minions. He's going to take damage for killing my minions. He's not dealing damage to my face. And on top of that, um, what is on top of that? 
Oh, on top of that, only two of them minions die rather than three. So it's all very important distinctions. Okay, Dark Iron Dwarf, don't really care. Do I life tap here? Well, if I life tap, I'm going to be at six mana. Dark Iron Dwarf, it'll likely be the only thing I play, so I might as well life tap next turn. I'm going to use that to hit that thing. And if you're wondering, Boris, why are you damaging your knife juggler and not your Farseer? The reason is that there is a really big difference between three health and two health, because two dice to concentrate Consecration, three doesn't. Whereas there's almost no difference between two health and one health. Unless, of course, your opponent plays another Elven Archer. But hopefully he's gotten his Elven Archers out of his system. Alright, we got a secret here. It's probably Noble Sacrifice. So that'll kill my... Well, we'll, we'll decide how to do this. Bluegill Warrior. Well, let's let it kill my Bluegill Warrior. Now this is a turn where I will life tap. Ooh, that's a good card. So is it a Repentance? Nope. Is it a Redemption? No, it's a Noble Sacrifice. Get down! Get down. Alright, I'm gonna use the Dwarf. There is, a, there is a price to this that puts the Dwarf within range of Hammer of Wrath. However... Oh my gosh! Oh no, 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 never mind. Uh, however, um, this thing was already gonna die to Hammer of Wrath, so it's not a big deal. I was thinking for a moment I could have killed him with the blue if I had just attacked everything at his face. Keep in mind, though, that um, the Noble Sacrifice would have stopped the Blue Glow Warrior. So he plays Ascension, but unless he's got a uh, Divine Shield, this thing will die to my Tiger. And then I just kill him with my other minions. You know, I'm starting to, I feel like I'm starting to get better at correctly judging how much endgame a deck needs. I used to, I think, overvalue how much endgame is needed in a deck for it to be good. But just, just like three or four cards, three or four big cards is usually going to be enough. Like, all this deck has is uh, a couple of commanders, an ogre. Well, actually, this guy, this deck has five, six drops. It's almost, like, too many. But, like, you know, if you just have three or four, maybe four, nice, big, fatty minions, that's that's probably going to be enough. Because if you think about it, most games that go to the end anyway, by the time you'd be able to play those minions, you'd have drawn through, like, half your deck. So the odds are pretty good that you're going to have drawn, like, one or two of the big minions if you, if that's all you've got. All right, two wins. Man, I feel like I've been playing for a long time. Another Paladin. So two Druids and then two Paladins. I beat the first Druid, lost the second. I beat the first Paladin. We'll see if I lose the second one. All right, well, I'm going to pass the Defender of Argus. That's not going to be that helpful anytime soon. But Geomancer plus Mortal Coil is a pretty stellar combo. Because it means you deal two damage for one mana, so it's like a Holy Smite, essentially. But can't target the face, and you draw a card. He doesn't like his hand. He mulligan three cards. Kept this card. Let's see if he plays it. Dread Infernal, not that helpful. Let's see if he plays... What is it? This card that one that he kept? I yeah, because he just drew this one. He kept, like, the second one over. Although, where did the, where did the coin go? Ah, crap. I lost track of it. Anyway, it wasn't a two-drop. So, I could play the Geomancer, but I'm going to play the Fairy Dragon instead. I'd like to keep this in my hand, if at all possible, just in case of, like, Blue Gila Warriors. Paladins are probably, like, the worst class in the game at killing your two-drop, but they are still... It's still possible. All right, Loot Hoarder. Nice. We don't even need the Geomancer here. So it's Mortal Quellet. We each draw a card now. It's Pit Lord. Very enthusiastic. Always been showing up. And we'll play the Infiltrator. Again, I'd like to just keep this Geomancer in my hand because it's quite possible that I'll want to play it and Mortal Coil in the same turn. Man, everybody's going online, offline. Lots of people playing. Diablo. And my opponent has really done nothing so far. This, unfortunately, will not die to a mortal coil. Oh, he's going to even get a coin out. What is he going to get? Another two drop? Shields up. Oh my gosh, he's got two two threes. Oh, that's annoying. That is annoying. Well, I wish I'd kept Defender of Argus now. So I can't play the Pit Lord because I really do need a mortal coil here. But luckily the Golem is a good top deck. So I ended up not needing this Geomancer for my mortal coils. Ah, oh, that's annoying. All right, so we trade everything off. Don't let paladins keep creatures, my friends. This is actually all right. So he's got six cards to my five, soon to be six. I'm the first player, so I'm actually doing fine. And then I can play the Pit Lord on turn five, hopefully. And then this is a good drop on turn six, hopefully. Now the Panther, this is, this is actually kind of nice to see. I can't deal with it anyway, so I, I'm free to do whatever I want. So I will just go ahead and play a Pit Lord. Swing for two. 
And the Panther's actually a pretty good drop for him, just one single point of buff damage, and he will actually get to kill my Pit Lord with pretty good efficiency. Three drop, killing a four drop, and then also, I took five damage. He just plays a Kodo, though, which is not exactly what he needs in his life right now. He would have wanted to kill this Pit Lord. Instead, the damaged Golem will kill the Panther if the Panther reveals itself. He probably shouldn't reveal the Panther. He actually reveals the Panther. I don't think that was the right move at all. Oh, man. Well, okay. So, I've got a bevy of options. I could do the obvious. I could just kill the Panther with the Golem, kill the Kodo with this, and then just play my biggest minion, which is a Dread Infernal. This would then be a 2 health. Or I could do some wacky stuff, like Geomancer... Demon fire, I, what, what am I doing? No, I can demon fire this thing, Defender of Argus. Do that, hit him in the face. Hmm. I like this demon fire plan, actually. I like this demon fire plan. I like, um... And actually, I'll hang on to this Defender of Argus. Let's play the panther down. So, yeah, I like that plan. De demon fire is a pretty weak removal card, it's likely to become irrelevant. So I might as well use it while it was good and keep more total minions on the board. What's nice about the Dread Infernal is it'll kill off the recruits he makes. It's actually gonna Consecrate. Oof. It's gonna Consecrate there. And all right, Earthen Ring Farseer, MVP. I'm gonna heal that guy up so I can kill off this Fairy Dragon. And then, sure, I'll play Defender of Argus here. It's better than Life Tapping and Geomancer. So we've got a pretty sick board. It's safe from Consecration. He's got five cards to my five, soon to be six. I'm the first player, and I'm drawing ahead, so I am ahead. Got this to kill off the Novice Engineer, and if he makes a recruit, I'll kill that too, without having to divert my creature's attacks. That's pretty good to see. All right, this is looking good. I'd say that he could win, but I've got the advantage. Ooh, nice. I'll get to kill off the little Mechanical Dragon thing as well. All right. Yep, we're gonna do it. So, oh God, I just love playing against Paladins. You can have all the minions in the world at one health and it doesn't even matter. Because there's no swipe. I guess what I'm saying is I, I love playing against people who aren't Druids because then there's no swipe. Oh, wow. Tyrion Forgering, pretty good card. Luckily, I'm doing just fine. I actually am pretty excited to see this because I can just pop Divine Shield with that. My Pit Lord, well, he was good this game. You gotta admit, he really did his duty. Gonna swing, swing. I will life tap here in case of Soul Fire to win the game on the spot. Nope, okay, so we'll just play a Sunwalker. And we're threatening the killing of Bevy of Fashions. He can't attack my minions because either one that he attacks with this weapon will kill him. So Tyrion was just a 6-6 with Divine Shield for 8 mana, essentially, and that's not very good. Alright, he's gonna heal up a little bit, but he really needed, like, taunt for these things. This is, okay, this is just silliness. At that point, he might as well have just killed himself. Go out in style. Oh, he failed to go out in style. That's too bad. So anyway, we're gonna win the game. That was, that was solid. So, beat a druid, lost a druid, and then beat two paladins. Beat a paladin, beat a paladin. We now need one more game. So I won a game earlier in the in the queues with the old board control warlock deck, but then I then I stopped playing because it was just extremely rough going. I should probably make the zoo deck. I feel lame making a deck that I know that like everybody and their mom plays, but you know if it's effective, it's effective, and it's, it's nice to have decks that you can make your daily quests with. Or I could make my own warlock deck, but warlock I think is a class whose like design space or creativity space for decks has been like really thoroughly explored you know there's the handlock deck that was a really creative idea and then that that that's a thing and then there's the war murlocs and that's been done and then there's the zoo which has been done and the board control has been done i mean everything's pretty much been done i don't know if i can come up with anything all that exciting to do for warlocks all right this is unfortunate i'd love to keep some of these awesome cards but i can't because i don't have anything to play i'll keep a demon fire hopefully he'll just play a three two of some sort and let me kill it that's actually pretty nice Really nice indeed. I can play the Infiltrator on turn one. Unfortunately, that will not kill a Northshire Cleric. He Mind Visions. All right. Now, Mind Vision steals a coin with eerie frequency. We'll see if that happened to my opponent here. We'll just play an Infiltrator. Q 
Curious Georg. Nice. I wonder if he ran out of space for his name. Oh my god, he stole the coin. Honestly, I, I there have been times where I've... Wait, is he? Wait, is he? The, no, I'm the second player. I have the coin. I got like tripped around for a second there. There have been times when I have stolen something other than a coin, but those are few and far between. All right, so I really wanted to have a mortal coil in my hand before playing knife juggler because I didn't want this to kill the knife juggler and then not have a good answer to the damaged golem. Unfortunately, I drew the mortal coil off of the life gain, and now he's kind of power burst shield. Oh my god, I'm just gonna lose to this. Harvest Golem nonsense. Ah, uh, Jesus. The problem is, attacking this thing doesn't even do me any good because it's just going to uh, get healed. So I'll play my own Golem and we'll pass the turn here. I think I will be hanging on to this coin until turn 5 so I can get this Ogre out. Hopefully, my opponent doesn't have any Shadow Word deaths. Hopefully. Your magic. Oh, he's gonna silence my golem. Talk about adding insult to injury. Jesus. Lol. Okay, that's good. That's a really good top deck because what this allows me to do is have my infiltrator trade up and kill his spellbreaker. And he's still just doing two damage a turn to me, which isn't the end of the world as long as he doesn't get his inner fire combo. And then next turn I can coin into, well, one of these six drops. We'll see which one is appropriate. Oh my god. Well, looks like it might actually need to be the Argent Commander. Yeah, okay, so coin, Argent Commander. So the way that you do this is, first you hit it with the Dwarf, but then when he becomes enraged, you pop the Divine Shield. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit his Golem with mine. Risky move because he is a priest, he could always heal this. But I'm gambling that he's got better things to do with his mana, so if he heals this, he's sacrificing doing something better. And then I can, if he runs in here, ah, he played a f four drop, so he's gonna be able to heal this up and kill my one of my four twos. That's unfortunate. Okay, well, let's think. You know what? The move here is as follows. I'm gonna run in there. I'm gonna run in there. And as much as I'd like to play a Mortal Coil, I think this is actually better. So, I'm a little bit struggling life-wise. I'm down to 20, but he's only got five cards and no board, and I've got a 6-6. Six, six. Now, of course, you can Shadow Word Death, and if he has a good four drop, he'll be right back in this game. But if he doesn't have Shadow Word Death and a really good four drop, then either he kills us and does nothing. Oh god, does he actually have Shadow Word Death? Okay, no, he didn't have Shadow Word Death. He just had the good four drop. But now what I can do is I can play my Ogre. Or let's see, I can actually play Pit Lord. Don't really want to do the Pit Lord if I don't have to. However, yeah, let's just play Ogre. This is, this is totally fine. We don't need these Mortal Coils yet, so we'll just pass the turn here. So he didn't have Shadow Word Death. That's excellent news. He might have a Mind Control. I gotta keep an eye on that because I really can't deal with my own dudes. I would love to get a Spellbreaker here so I could silence this off and kill the Frost Elemental. I can't uh, deal with it at the moment. I cannot play Pit Lord. I just can't. I think I, I if I go down to 16 and he hits me down to 11, it's just bad. So the good news is I'm just like flowing in cards. So let's just drop a bunch of stuff here. And pass the turn. If he has Holy Nova, he can clear my board. So be it. Well, he had the Holy Nova. That's a bummer. Sorry guys, I'm texting my girlfriend here. Making plans for tomorrow. Ha da 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 da! Right afterward. Okay. So, the situation here is I'm a little bit in a perilous life situation, but he's got only three cards. You know what? I need to play this Pit Lord. I'm not going to life tap, because that would be foolhardy. But I do need to play that Pit Lord and pass the turn. So, I just don't like my life situation here. But 
If he doesn't have a good answer to that pit lord, I could be okay. Faceless manipulator is gonna copy it. Well, that's actually fine because I can uh, I can run into it, and then moral coil to finish it off, and stick around with a five one. It's fine. I can also mortal coil that thing. Man, mortal coil. You see, guys, this card, this mortal coil card, is pretty terrific. I'm really happy that I took it. Ooh, defender of Argus. Well, it doesn't let the wolf rider reach up quite high enough. So, whoa. Let's do this correctly. We're gonna kill that thing. Then mortal coil number two. Sunwalker, yeah, definitely. I need to get that down. Okay, now if he mind controls the Sunwalker, no Probalo. We're gonna demon fire to pop off the divine shield and use the Pit Lord to kill it. He's gonna Holy Nova number two. Well, that's actually fine because now he doesn't have any good mind control targets. Let's see, we're gonna do this. This. I'm gonna hang on to this Defender of Argus so that I can try to use it intelligently. I'm not life tapping here because first of all I'm already ahead on cards and second of all the life situation is a bit perilous. I will life tap if I need to. Okay, so this tells me what I needed to know. Oh no, is he gonna Divine Spirit that thing? That would be annoying. He could still Divine Spirit that thing. I'm gonna Power Bridge- Ah, oh, that's fine. Power shield, not a problem at all. I really don't care that much. It's a it makes it a little bit more annoying to kill that thing, but not that much. Okay, so what's the best way to kill this? Do -do -do -do. I want to keep this as a 4 or 5 so it doesn't die to shadow words. So we'll put this here. We'll hit it like that. I guess I'll use the Stormpike Commando to shoot it dead. Swing, swing. Okay, we're looking good now, folks. Holy Nova, most of my stuff survives. He can't burn me out unless he, like, top decks back-to-back -back holy fires. And then I'm starting to have a lot of damage here. Ross Elemental. Yeah, I'm not that concerned. I'm definitely not concerned about that thing. All right. Let's take a look at my draw. Spellbreaker. I could actually silence this. That would get rid of the taunt, but it would also unfreeze it. Then I could hit for, let's see... 5, 9, 11, 11 plus 7 is 18 damage? Oh, not quite. Uh, okay, so we're not gonna go crazy then, doing that. I have three taunts out here. I'm really not that concerned about uh, any any crazy stuff happening. I'll play a Spellbreaker, just silence one of his own minions. So I got lots of pressure here. Plenty of taunt for him to deal with, so he can't really get by me. Sarah is fancy and all, but uh, it's a little too little, a little too late. I mean, I've got killing damage here. So we lost to Gruul, but we did beat Ysera, and we best him. Alright, this is looking pretty good. Kind of surprised how well this deck has been doing, but I got 120 gold in my pocket. This is probably, by the way, the richest that I'm going to be because over time, I do not usually make it to 7. I make it to 7 wins a little bit less than 50% of the time. So once I start doing like 1 or 2 runs per day, now that I'm part-time, uh, it's, it's unlikely that I'm going to you know be able to save up money and make it to the 6,500 mark. Looks like 6,500 is the top of what I was able to achieve because that was how I kind of make money. I'd, you know, I'd not play Arena for a few days and then you save up your daily quests and get rich all of a sudden. Right, 2LV the Shaman. Alright, sorry, I gotta text a little bit. My class ends at 2. I can make it by 2.45. Okay. Well, let's keep our 3 drops so we have something to do, but the 6 drops obviously need to go. We got our 1 drop here. Demon fire, I, th I think I'm I think I'm happy with it. I mean, it was dead in my hand last game, granted, but I think I'm happy with it. I think it's good that I've got more removal in this deck because this deck really does struggle killing things. All right, well, of course this thing runs into forked lightning. What's the alternative? Life tap? Nah. I'll do this. If he forked lightnings, he forked lightnings. Then he's passing turn three basically. I get to play a panther. We'll be back in shape. I'd still rather he didn't have it. 
I think I, I find I do that a lot. There's like a common pattern to my analysis. Yeah, if he does this thing, it's not a big deal. And then I explain at length why it's not a big deal. And then I say that I'd still rather he didn't do it. All right, he's got a Horbus Gold, and that is a really good creature here. Mortal Coil, well, that kind of helps. Not enough, though. So we're aggroing it up here a little bit. God, Harvest Golem, of all the three drops in the world, man, that was like the worst one that I could have seen. Unless I top deck my other Mortal Coil. This is awkward, because he kills one of them, then another, and then I have to Mortal Coil. So even with the card draw off the Mortal Coil, it's still a two for one. Oh, so just, he's, just gonna, he's just gonna win the game here. Okay, no, that's, that's also fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. No problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Just gonna win the game on the spot. Ah, hey! That's a good top deck. I was gonna life tap, but instead we can harvest Golem up here. So hopefully my Golem will hit his Golem, my Worgen can finish it off, and then I can Mortal Coil the damage thing. Hopefully. Actually, no. I'd, I'd use the Demon Fire to kill this, not the Infiltrator. Anyway, I can't do it because he got a Taunt Totem. I got I have two harvest golems in this deck. Huh, that's great. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do it, folks. We're gonna do this, and then that, and then that. Well, that's nice. And then I guess I'm gonna life tap. Now I life tap last because I was drawing a card off of Mortal Coil, but generally you should life tap first on your turns. So he's got seven cards to my five, soon to be six. That's a bit sad considering I mortal coiled and life tapped. But Lightning Storm went a long freaking way. This is a pretty good drop, although I find I have pretty miserable luck with shamans having Hex against me. Considering Hex is the only card that a shaman has that will remotely deal with this, Earth Shock doesn't really count. Um, the fact that shamans like have it against me all the time is kind of frustrating. This is also a very good minion. Please don't be a taunt totem. Thank you. I am going to kill this right now because it's just so dangerous if you leave it alone. Hmm. Now, how do I kill it? I can actually play Booga Warrior and a Harvest Golem. No, we'll play a Sunwalker. We'll see if he's got the Hex. Shamans always... I, I've, I've had drafts where I didn't even get a Hex. But, uh, so the fact that Shamans always have Hex against me is kind of annoying. I lost a really frustrating game in my last arena where a Shaman had three Hexes. Motherfucker. Honest to God three hexes and then this guy has a hex and a stormforge axe god damn it well at least he has to waste one tick killing his own frog but still all righty we'll play this tiger now the question is do we go straight for the face or do we actually kill this wrath of air totem i think actually i'm gonna start going for the face he's got a lot of card advantage he can kill off both of my minions i need to start going for the face that's my main chance of winning if i get like arjun commander and a soul fire and I can get him down low enough with this tiger hit. I could potentially burn him out. Potentially. Of course, he needs to not have any taunts, or life gains, or mass removal. But, you know, I still feel like I'm more likely to be able to pull that off than just a regular fair fight, given this card situation. Granted, I'm a warlock with a high life total, so I guess I could catch up on cards. Hmm. I might have misevaluated there. I probably should have just killed this thing. Right, he's not going to play any spells, he's just going to do an Archmage. And I can still revert, I can still now use my minion to kill this totem and be okay. Hmm, okay. So what I could do is I could actually kill this Archmage. And then use the Booga Warrior, or I could hit him in the face. Let's think about this carefully here. 5, 7, 10 damage, he's down to 6 health, god. I think I'm just going to try to see if I can kill him. So that's good that I top that I did that first. Let's play Knife Juggler. See if a knife will hit him in the face. That's actually what I'm hoping for. Nope, it hits the totem. Well, going straight for the face here. Another Lightning Storm would win him the game, but that's a rare. What are the odds he saw two in his draft and got them both? Other than that, he really can't deal with this board easily. Stormforge Dax will let him kill something, but then he's taking damage. And all I have to do is life tap my way into a Soul Fire or an Argent Commander, and it's lights out. Plus, this tiger is not a pushover. A lightning bolt will actually kill this, because he's got two spell damages. But them's the risks you take. I still think that is my best chance of winning. Well, again, maybe not. Maybe it would have been better just to fight fair, kill this, kill this, have him be at, like, 20 health, and be life-tapping. But now, it's like, I'm, I'm making it so that the game is decided right now. Either he has the answers and he wins, or he doesn't have the answer and it's over. Which has its own kind of charm. 
intuitively, instinctively, I feel good about my chances. I don't know if that's justified in any way, but I feel good. All right, it's got the light and lightning bolt for that. I'm still doing okay here. Still doing okay. He has to kill the knife juggler. Not well. It's the bi it's the biggest body, and it has a big ability, so he's obviously got to kill that thing. And he will. What does he have for seven mana then? Please don't be taunt. One in three odds. He doesn't get it. Good. He's gonna hit this, so he doesn't have an answer for it. That's good news. Does he have a kill for this? He's got a Stormpike Commander. That's unfortunate. Well, now an Argent Commander or a Soulfire wins me the game. And I've got a couple of Argent Commanders and a Soulfire. So let me life tap first to see if I can pull one of them and just win. Nope. All right. Well, I could play two minions or just the Dread Inferno. Let's play two. Gives him more distractions. More stuff he must kill to stay in the game. And then next turn, I will have another two chances to draw an Argent Commander or a Soulfire. Problem is, he now has a 50-50 chance of getting a Totem, so the Argent Commander might not be the kill anymore. Um, and it would have to be Soulfire. But still, I have two chances to get it, and it's only 14 cards left in my deck. So it's decent odds. Decent odds. Stormpike Commando deals direct damage as well, but that is two, and then this is only one, so I'm just a little bit shy of being able to kill him. What's interesting is that the Senjin having five health is actually a big deal. It means that his minions do not kill it by themselves, so he has to have a removal spell or some kind of buff to be able to kill the Senjin so that the other of these two minions can go after my 3-3. Three, three. Maybe I should have played the Harvest Golem, but life isn't that big of a deal. And this being able to pop back would have made a big difference. Anyway, um, he's going to have Hex number two. Oh, gosh, this actually could be bad. And Azure Drake, so that's his whole turn. So he didn't actually flip a totem, so again, I have two chances now to get an Argent Commander or a Soul Fire. I have three winning cards here and two chances to get them. It's pretty decent odds, I think. I don't know what the math is on that exactly. Corruption, are you freaking kidding me? All right. Soul Fire, oh, thank goodness. And there it is. Well, I don't know if I made the correct play. I will be honest about that. It's possible that I would have won and much more safely just by playing fair. And catching up with the card disadvantage through life tap. Alright, so we're up to five wins. God, that felt like my seventh win, but whatever. Five wins is good. Got one more chance to slip before I fall. That was needlessly poetic, I think. That was the first time I saw Corruption. And I can't really complain, because that card's terrible. But I stand by that choice. I mean, I, I, it's like my only out, out to anything. And anything big. Third Paladin here, Kenzius the Paladin. I will fight. Eh, not the greatest opening hand. Okay, what we'll do is we'll keep the Geomancer and the Pitlord, because the Pitlord could be really strong on turn three with the coin. And the Mortal Coil, I'm really happy to see that. So if he has a slow start and makes a recruit, I can respond with just a Mortal Coil to kill the recruit and draw a card. Clear his board and not go down on cards. And then also, um, I have a Geomancer in case he plays a 3-2. I can play Geomancer, Coin, Mortal Coil. That does kind of renege on my plan of coining out the Pit Lord, but I feel like that's worth it to get that card advantage. Yeah. Now I can also coin into the Golem, but this seems stronger because it deals with it right away. So... Starting off with some card advantage, and a minion, and keeping a Paladin's board clear, all good things. I can actually kill a decent number of 3-drop with the Wolf Rider, but today seems to be the day of everybody play Harvest Golems against Papa Boris, and the Wolf Rider doesn't work so well against that. But a Razor Van Hunter I can kill happily. Scarlet Crusader would also suck here. I'd have to throw both my minions at it. Oh my god, are you kidding? <laughs> are you kidding me? Ugh. <sighs> So, I could play my own golem and just risk whatever terrible things. No, let's just kill this. Let's just kill it. I hate this. I hate... What's up with all these freaking harvest golems? Everybody. So, I went up a card with my mortal coil. Now I went down a card against this freaking harvest golem. What I'm hoping now is that I play a pit lord and catch back up. The problem is that he gets to play whatever minion he wants, either a recruit or a real minion. And then I play a pit lord in response. And he can just, he can just have his whole turn to deal with it. All right, well, the Demolisher, I hope it actually hits my face. The Panther would be a bad play here because the Demolisher would have a 50-50 chance of killing it. 
If it hits the Pit Lord, he could finish off the Pit Lord with a True Silver Champion, which I would not be that thrilled with. Okay, so I'm down to 23 health just like that from the Demolisher and the Pit Lord, but the Pit Lord is very difficult to kill. What he needs is a Humility Effect. He's got True Silver Champion, so if the Demolisher had hit this, I would have been in a lot of trouble. Does he actually have the kill for this? What is he attacking? He is going to attack it. What does he have? Blessing of Might. Wow. All right, so he goes down a card for the Demolisher and Blessing of Might, but he goes up a card from True Silver Champion, so it's all a big old wash. I can only play one minion here, so I might as well play my biggest one. I could have played a three drop in Life Tap, but that did not seem correct at all, because my life's a bit perilous and I don't need cards. Cards are not the issue. My issue is board presence. Loot Hoarder is annoying. I don't really want to waste my Tiger's turn killing it. But I'm going to. Don't get me wrong. This is a mistake. Unless he's holding another True Silver Champion and has nothing better to do next turn, that's a mistake. He's too far away for, for him to be able to burn me out. And it's really would have been kind of useful to have the True Silver Champion around, for example, to, you know, finish off my Argent Commander. After... Or, or my Tiger after I killed his Loot Hoarder. So... Consecration would be pretty good for him here, but honestly not the end of the world. I'd still rather he not play it, but then I can play an Ogre and an Infiltrator and be decent. Still rather he not have it. If he has it, he should absolutely play it. I mean, this is, this is killing two pretty good minions. I doubt most people would make the mistake of waiting for a better Consecration than this. If this tiger survives, I would actually consider healing it with my Earthen Ring Farseer. It's gonna actually shoot my tiger. And does he have an Elven Archer to finish it off? Nope, he's just gonna kill it. Wow. Alright, well, this is good. So I'm not gonna play the Ogre because I have some better things to do. First, let's Mortal Coil that. Draw a card. Second, let's heal up my tiger. And then kill this thing. And then third, I will play a Golem rather than the Panther, just in case he does have a Consecration. The Panther would die to it, the Golem wouldn't. Well, now I'm in amazing shape. Life's not that different. I have eight cards to his four, so I just pretty much steam wrecked him. However, if the Demolisher had hit my Pit Lord, and he didn't have to use the Blessing of Might to kill the Pit Lord, he could actually be winning here. That was a, that was a huge swing in this game. Get in there and fight, Maggot. Demon Fire. Well, I'm gonna use this on the principle that it's always bad, so I'm gonna use it while it's good. Kill that. Play an Ogre. So I could have killed that thing, the 1-1, one, one, with um, my guy, because the difference between 2 and 1 doesn't really matter. But I actually used the Golem, bring it into Consecration range, because the Golem comes back, and because this guy hits harder. It's gonna lay on hands. That's not the best card here. It doesn't even catch him up to me card-wise, and it accomplishes nothing on the turn. Letting me just bash the utter living daylights out of him. So... I'll play the Golem. Do I play the Panther, which now dies to the Consecration he's probably holding? These all die to Consecration that he's probably gonna play. Um, but even if he plays a Consecration, I've still got 9 damage. Yeah, I'm actually just gonna play this thing. It's fine. I'm not gonna life tap. I'm feeling alright here. If he equality and Consecrates, he might actually win the game. Although the Golems would drop, drop back into existence. And get him down to 5 health, down to 3 health, and a Soul Fire would let me win. Again. Or my second Argent Commander. Yeah, this could have this might have been a mana addict, and I'm really glad it wasn't. That was almost a terrible draft decision. I think I over overcompensated for curve concerns. Almost. I ended up choosing the Argent Commander over the mana mana worm mana addict. Okay, well he's gotta have equality consecration or not. Tyrion Forging won't save him. Pretty sure nothing else will save him. That was a good illustration of where Lay on Hands was not a great card, although in my last draft I picked a Big Game Hunter over Lay on Hands, and I regretted it sorely the entire time. Well, there was one time I got to kill an Iron Bark, but like, Lay on Hands would have still been really good. Alright, no Equality Consecration here. Just a really big Fen Creeper. 
Well, I still got lethal, I'm pretty sure, on the board. Okay, maybe not anymore. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, let's test if my board is good enough for this before I play my other stuff. So here is 10 damage for the Fen Creeper. Yes, I have just enough damage to kill him. Didn't need anything else. But I had uh, four more damage that I could have used. Plus life tapping for a soul fire. Well, we played three paladins in this arena and pretty much smashed them all. I mean, there was there was one tough game, but other than that, it was, it was pretty solid wins against paladins. And I've got one chance to screw up, but even if I lose the next two games, this arena, I am calling a success. I think making to six wins is very good. And I'm happy to be able to do that for you folks today on YouTube. The YouTubes bringing it home since 2000 and actually I don't know what year the YouTube was made. The YouTube? Arathus. Okay, this has been a very one-sided arena. We've This is what, our second shaman or our third? And we've had three paladins and two druids. You know, I'm gonna mulligan soul fire. With these two charge creatures and this one drop, I don't think I'm actually pressed for removal here, so I might as well save that for later. It's always better to have later in the game. So we'll play this on turn. I mean, okay, we got the curve. One, two, three, four. This might not be playable on turn four, depending on the state of things, but still, feeling pretty good about things. Hopefully he plays a totem and I can just kill it. That will be the best, and then hopefully I can play this and he doesn't have forked lightning. Please don't be the one one. Eh, thank you. I'm definitely not gonna let that live though. Alright. Let's see if he has forked lightning. Hopefully he doesn't. If he does, he'll be pretty overloaded next turn. I'll only be able to make a totem. Let's see, he's fishing for spell damage, I bet, and then playing Fork Lightning. Yeah, he has Fork Lightning. Oh, that sucks. Well, so he goes up a card, but on the positive end of things, I get to kill this totem off with my other charge creature, and I've got a little bit of board presence. So he's got six cards to my five, soon to B6, and he's overloaded. And he hasn't done anything except make totems. Oh man, that's a good card. Well, that's that kills my panther, that kills my stormpike commando. That just kills everything. Alright. I'll play the panther. And I'm not gonna coin into this bluegill warrior because I'd like to coin into the sunwalker and have it get hexed, I'm sure. But still, just on the off chance, crazy off chance, that this shaman doesn't have the one card in the universe that deals with sunwalkers, um, we'll go ahead and play that sunwalker. This is pretty dire of a situation, actually. So, the Panther, I don't really want to trade it into the Gnomish Inventor. The Dark Iron Dwarfs, well, I could do the Boogle Warrior Dark Iron Dwarf. No, that's dumb. We're going to do this, and I'm honestly just going to hope he doesn't have a Hex. That is literally what I'm doing. Silence would also be good for him, but at least it would let me keep a 4-5. I'm just hoping he doesn't have Hex. That is that is completely it. Fire Elemental would also be good. Let's him kill the Panther off, but Hex is the main concern. Well, the longer he thinks, the more hope grows in my heart that he doesn't have a Hex. Worth noting the fact that I have a lot of direct damage here. Assuming I have a minion to stay alive and he doesn't have Taunt, I've got 2 damage, 4 damage, 6 damage that I can deal to his face. If these minions, let's say, by some miracle, were both able to attack, that's 14 damage, he'd be down to 7 health. It's worth doing these kind of calculations during the game. I think some players in this situation just like would be like, oh, up, you know, it's just playing some Hearthstone, whatever. He's at 21 health, he's got plenty of life, it's, there's not that much stuff on the board, but if you actually do a count, I mean, the amount of damage I might do to him is really high, and it's worth thinking about that, so that, that way you're less likely to forget to look for the kill, if the kill presents itself. Well, at this point, he's either super slow rolling a hex, or he just doesn't have a good answer, and he's wondering what to do with his turn. Kind of amazing that he has no removal, no fire elementals, no nothing. He's actually going to hit that thing. Take four damage to the face, that's fine. Flame Tongue Totem, does he have another buff? I assume he does. He thought about that turn for a long time. It's gonna Lightning Storm. Okay, so he will actually clear out my board with this. Losing the Gnomish Mentor in the process and plays a Voodoo Doctor to heal up. That is all very fair. All right. Well, what I'd like to do is Mortal Quail this thing, Blue Glow Warrior and Dark Iron Dwarf. Unfortunately, I can only that's seven mana, I only have six. I think though this this is this is this is definitely a move. That 
that's definitely a move. Stormpike Commando, having it die to this seems a bit silly. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to silence this Flame Tongue, which is risky because if he played a taunt later, I might regret not having a silence. But this survives against Stormforged Dax. He clearly doesn't have anything good, or else he would have done a better turn than what he would ended up doing. It's a 4-3, which hits him kind of hard. I've still got this 6 damage thing going on over here. All right, he's going to play Senjin. That's fine. Dark Iron Dwarf is pretty good. Trading up. I could also shoot it and then trade that way. But the Dark Iron Dwarf is a better body than this thing is. This plus Dark Iron Dwarf is only 4 damage, alas. Okay, so we'll do this. We'll do that. And rather than playing the Blue Girl Warrior, let's actually just drop the Golem. Let's keep things that don't die to this axe. Threatening 6 damage here. Down to 13, down to 9. Yeah, burning him out is going to be tough, but the good news is he's got 6 cards and a weapon. I have 5 cards, soon to be 6, but one of his cards is an 03, so that's just going to die. If I want it to, I can just leave it alive as well, if I wish. And can Okay. Well, I don't have any... I already used my silence, unfortunately, so that's a bit sad. The question now is, you know, how fair do we fight? Do I just go everything for the face? Or do I try to play fair and kill the flame tongue, kill the healing totem? I think I think we gotta go for the, we gotta go for the face. Actually, am I gonna be life tapping this turn? Five, seven, nine. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna life tap. Before I do anything else. Ah, pit lord. Okay, we'll play the pit lord. This is nice and big. And rather than playing this thing, let's go ahead and drop a minion. I'm gonna kill the healing totem here. I'm going to judge that that 2 damage on his face won't make the difference in the end, hopefully. And I want to limit his odds of getting a Taunt Totem. Although I do have a pretty good answer to the Taunt Totem. I don't know, maybe I should have just hit him in the face. Well, let's see what he's got. He needs an answer to this thing and the Dark Iron Dwarf. Well, the Dark Iron Dwarf he doesn't need an answer to. He's got that with the Cairn. What's nice about that is, though, that because I killed the Healing Totem, this thing will stay at 1 health, and then I can Mortal Coil for a 1 mana draw card. Yes, it'll bring back a Chillwind Yeti, but it lets me use the Mortal Coil, where if I'm going for the face, the Mortal Coil cannot hit him in the face. Okay, so he's got two of those guys. Well, anyway, it looks like I made the right call trying to race him out, because I'm going to need all the help. I he is a Hex. Ah, oh, jeez, I was really hoping he didn't have a Hex. Well, this is going to be close. I can get him down to 10, 8, 6. It's going to be close. It's going to be real, real close. He actually, like, left me with two minions, amazingly. Ah, this is actually kind of nice. Okay, so we're going to play Knife Juggler here. Lugula Warrior, see where the knife goes. Maybe it'll hit this thing. Nope. Okay, do I play this thing to shoot, shoot his face? Ah, uh, yeah, we'll play this thing and we're going to shoot his face. Wait, no! No, 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 I need a Mortal Quail because this, this opportunity might disappear. I'm actually going to Mortal Quail, draw a card... Okay, yes. And then play another minion. Okay. So now I can shoot him down to six damage. Nothing you can do about that. He can kill two of my minions with what he has on the board, but that leaves three. So he needs some answers in his hand. Or else my minions are just going to beat him to death. If I can get a soul fire, he's down to two health. So if even one of my minions can attack his face... I will now be life tapping every turn and trying to fish out a soul fire to kill the game off, or an Argent Commander, which I believe I still have two of. As long as he doesn't get a taunt, the Argent Commander will be good. Feel the power. Ah, uh, that's annoying. So he gets to kill an extra minion with that. He can kill, say, the Blue Gill Warrior and a Golem, and this thing will still live, or he can just let it kill the Knife Juggler. And the Earthen Ring Farseer. He's going to choose just to kill my best minions. Which is probably pretty smart. Even though it means losing the Wind Fury. That's a mistake. Unless he has targeted removal for this. Um, if he has like a Lightning Bolt for this. Then what he did makes sense. Otherwise what he did makes no sense. Because this is a 3-3. Three, three, that was a 3-2. But the 3-2 was not able to be targeted. The Wolf will let the Flame Tongue here kill my Blue Gill Warrior. So he gets to kill an extra minion. That's unfortunate. He still gets to attack with this thing. To kill my Farseer. And hopefully not play a Taunt Totem. Oh my god, he got a Taunt Totem. So this Golem actually gets to attack, but it has to attack the Taunt. Which is incredibly frustrating. Because I would have actually won the game if that had been not a Taunt Totem. Well, let's um, flip. Because if I actually get Soul Fire now, I will still win. Nope. So we're going to do this. 
And I'm gonna play the Argent Commander. Now, the Argent Commander is very important here. You go for the face. He can't kill me. He's got 9, 11, 15 damage. He's gonna have to do 9 more damage, unless he has more Wind Fury shenanigans. Or I guess a Bloodlust. Oh god. He wins with Bloodlust. Ah, well, whatever. I took the chance I needed to take. He had a 1 in 4 chance of not dying. And he actually nailed it. Which kind of sucks. So if he has a Bloodlust here to win, then he just won because he got lucky, and that's fine. Flips a totem and plays no mission mentor, so no bloodlust. Interesting, if there was a bloodlust in his deck, then making this totem was a mistake. He should have played this to see if he can get a bloodlust and win, and failing that, fish for a totem. What's weird is that if he can't win, it's actually difficult for him to survive because these minions both have to be hit twice in order to be killed. Divine Shield needs to be popped, and the golem needs to be finished off. He can do that, but it would require him, you know, throwing everything at these minions. Yeah, that taunt was a good flip. He has another hex. Man, it's a frickin' hex epidemic. <laughs> Get it? Like, it's like an epidemic, but anyway. It's a frickin' hex epidemic here. Um, he has so many of those, and he found a really efficient way of killing my minions. So he's so now actually it's do or die. I, I lose the game if I don't get soul fire. Actually, Argent Commander does not win me the game because um this guy costs five mana and I cannot play him and Argent Commander in the same turn. Another Bluegill Warrior would win though. Defender of Argus. Motherfucker. Uh he actually I think wins. I cannot play two minions and the defender because I life tapped for it. But I guess what I have to do then is shoot that. Oh jeez! I don't have enough mana for the defender. Well, He's got, he's got lethal. Ah, <sighs> that was so stupid. Well he sees the lethal. That game was dumb. I'd actually, oh god, I'm not 100% sure that I could have won the game um, if he hadn't been a taunt, because I might not have had enough mana to actually play my stuff. Anyway, I'm not going to say well played. That was dumb. It was a well played game. I'm being catty. That was, that was a good game. Arathis. So it's a little bit sad being at six wins, coming that close to winning. And getting a hexed a whole bunch. The hex on my Pit Lord and the hex on my uh, Argent Commander were both extremely crucial to his being able to win. Because that hex allowed him to keep a whole bunch more minions alive and deal a whole bunch more damage to me, giving me one fewer turn to get an out. And not to mention it stopped me from winning. So, Taunosis, so first new class is a mage. That's unfortunate. Really don't like being Warlock against mage. Because you burn yourself with life tap, and mages are, of course, very good at burning you out more. I'm going to keep both of these three drops, even though as the first player I can only play one, simply because they are both, I think, so crucial to success. I need this life gain against a mage, and I need this, just because it's a really good three drop. But uh, my deck is not obliging me with anything good. Oh, God, please don't, please don't do things. Oh, Jesus Christ. So it all begins. It all begins. Alright. So I'm gonna go down to like 24 health, lickety split, split, because this thing will attack me. And then I can't afford to demon fire it. I really need to put a minion down. Oh geez. Am I gonna demon fire that thing? It's actually gonna keep it hidden. Interesting choice. Well, I guess that makes my decision easier. Um, we'll just play a harvest golem then. As a mage, of course, you can run the Infiltrator into the Golem and ping it, but I'm totally fine because every time that I'm not getting hit in the face in this matchup is a celebration for me. It's Garlic Crusader. Ah, oh, jeez. There's just no end to this. All right, that's actually totally fine. So what I get to do now is play a Harvest Golem number two and a Mortal Coil. First, let's Mortal Coil this just to see if there's anything better that happens. Nope, okay. Harvest Golem. So now I can use the Scarlet Crusader to kill the Golem. Excuse me, she can use the Scarlet Crusader to kill the Golem and ping off the Golem. But then I get to play my terrible Stormpike Commander here and shoot the Scarlet Crusader to death. So as long as she doesn't have a two drop, I'm fine. Oh man, she's got a five minute play. Stampeding Kodo, what is going on today? Ah. Well, this is unfortunate because now oh, she's actually gonna cheekily hit me in the face. Uh, I, cannot, I cannot punish her for it. Oh, I actually could. Yes, I could. I'm gonna go ahead and play Kobold Geomancer. I'm going to run this in. Do this. And then Soul Fire. For five damage, we'll kill that Kodo. Oh, I lost my Farseer. That's unfortunate. Not only would I have liked to play it next turn, 
but healing is pretty good. I'm actually down a card here as the first player, so I'd say it's okay, but I'm not ahead. Water elemental, motherfucking. Honest to God, water elemental. Uh, okay, let's see how we do this. There's a number of options here. We'll do this. Let's kill this leper gnome. Live to tell about it. Let's swing at her face. So I'm just trying to cut back on the damage from the water elemental. By putting up some taunts. She can of course ping this, but that's the third of her mana. She might not want to do that. Oh my god. Ah, <sighs> the endless water elementals. And of course it only costs four mana. So we can just kill my stuff. And of course, Stormpike isn't quite good enough. Dark Iron Dwarf, well, that definitely helps. So I'm gonna trade up and kill this thing. And I'm not gonna life tap. I don't think I can afford to. I'm not gonna do it until I'm desperate. I've got cards to play. I don't have the mana to play them with, so I don't need a life tap right now. She can, of course, kill this with the elemental and then ping it, but then Stormpike Commando will be good unless she heals this up. What does she have with the rest of her mana? Geomancer is scary. Very scary. Oh, Harvest Golem. God damn it. <sighs> Alright, well, I'm gonna play this. And Infiltrator. I'm not gonna life tap. I need to preserve my health here. But I'm starting to slip really far behind. Just card wise, if you look at it, 5 to 3 right now. There's a secret. If that's Mirror Entity, I'm gonna lose. Well, I needed to beat that shaman when I had the chance. I guess least of all evils is if that gets me your entity. I don't want her getting a sunwalker, that's for sure. First. Should I life tap? Okay, I'll life tap. I don't know. I'll do it one time. Maybe I should have done it once earlier. Then this would already be in my hand. It's possible that I'm losing myself the game bit via bad life tapping. She'll win Yeti. Okay, that's fine. I'm just gonna keep plinking away here. But her cards are a little low, so she might not have the burn potential to kill me with. Dread Infernal is a consideration, but I would much rather drop all these taunts. Kill the Yeti. She's pinging this, she's not pinging the Divine Shield off of this, so that's all good. In the hood. I'm concerned about this being Vaporize. But it is possible still that I win this game if her cards are complete junk. Like, complete junk. Polymorph, that is not complete junk. We have many Does she have another secret? She throws that away, I guess, to rob my sheep of a target. Interesting. Well, let's check for Vaporize. It's Ice Barrier, well, that's fine. So, this is actually could still be a win for me. I'm gonna kill this. Play Ogre. I'm not gonna life tap. Again, I have to be very careful here about life, because two fireballs at any moment will kill me. Or like a Frostbolt and a Pyroblast will kill me as well. Like if these two cards are Frostbolt, Pyroblast, I lose. So you have to be very, very careful. There's another secret. Oh my gosh, if this secret is a Vaporize, that's extremely frustrating. I'll play a Charging Murloc to fish it out if I can. Um, who would I rather lose to a Vaporize? Actually this, because it's less durable. So it's not Mere Entity. It's not Vaporize. Okay. Well, that means it's either Spellbender, Counterspell, or Ice Block. I'm actually hoping one of the Spell ones, because I don't have any spells at the moment. And Spellbender does not redirect things from her face. This is really just abysmal, because it dies to my Arching Commanders. That tells me this is not a minion, or it's not a minion of five mana or less. All right, we'll kill that. Oh my gosh, can I afford to play this thing? I will play it, it's risky. But a 6-6 six, six I think is worth the risk. I'm obviously not gonna life tap here. So this is 12, 13, or excuse me, 12, 14 damage. Well, no, sorry, the bluegill's gonna die to pinging at the very least. So I'm, I'm killing her in two turns, which against a mage feels like an eternity. When she's got two cards. If this is Ice Block, it'll actually take me three turns to kill her. 
So she's got a lot of time to find her fireballs. And just blast my face. Is she gonna frost bolt my face? Oh, fuck. Well, that probably means that it is, in fact, a pyroblast in her hand. I drew a wolf rider. We're gonna find out if this is ice block. It's not ice block. Oh, my god. Wow. Well, this is worthy of an entry in Papa Boris' greatest hits, that's for sure. It's quite the game there. For the record, I would have life tapped. The frost bolt at the face, when she was bearing down, had two sixes bearing, two six toughness creatures bearing down on her, and could have frozen one and worked it down, proves it was almost certainly a pyroblast. So I would have life tapped to try to find my soul fire. Now we know it wasn't ice block if it was spell bender. The soul fire would have worked if it was counter spell. The soul fire would not have worked. If it was an Argent commander that I got with life tap, I would have won because it wasn't ice block. That's a pretty good hand so far. I wouldn't have even minded being the first player. In fact, I'll keep this. Decent odds of having a minion on the board still when the Dark Iron Dwarf drops, so I will I will do that. In the worst case, I might just keep this hidden so I can guarantee, almost guarantee a Dark Iron Dwarf usage. Obviously, we'll still die to Arcane Missile and Arcane Explosion. Please pass the turn. Thank you. Now, I could actually coin into Fairy Dragon, but I don't, don't really see much point. There's a lot of things she'll play that the Fairy Dragon would trade against, just as this will, so I might as well just do this. Is she gonna ping my face? That would be awesome. For sure. We'll never know, of course, if that last card was a Pyroblast. But I think it was. This is an incredibly good drop. Blue Glue Warrior doesn't quite cut the mustard. I had a couple of different options there. I could have either played the Fairy Dragon and tried to trade the Monty Berserker against it, or I could have coined for the Wolf Rider and killed this. This is a bit riskier because it runs into Shattered Sun Cleric, but I honestly haven't been seeing that many Shattered Sun Clerics, and I feel like the coin is valuable because I've got a lot of six drops in this deck. Okay, good. It, it works. It works. She's trying to ping this. She can't. Even though the buggy game makes it look like that's what she's doing. And here we'll make a tech play. I'm going to play Wolf Rider. I've actually done this before. This kind of thing. So I'm revealing both my guys and I'm attacking her. And you might wonder, Boris, why the hell are you doing that? She can just ping them to death. Well, that's half her mana, and I still have a creature on the board. So I'm trading cards for tempo. Now, Arcane Explosion or Arcane Missile would let her kill both of them, probably. But and, but I'm willing to risk that um, in this particular case. Because otherwise, I was just going to be too passive. You? That is also good. So she gets a two for one here, unfortunately. God, I got the Blue Glue Warrior army. Um, sure. Just go straight for the face. She clearly doesn't have Arcane Explosion or she would have played it. And she doesn't have Arcane Missiles either or she would have played that. So I'm just going to start to race her down here a little bit. Being cheeky. Very cheeky. Because this could get buffed and then kill something and live to tell about it. But I've got Mortal Coils I could draw, so there are outs to her outs. It is also possible that I'm playing recklessly on account of the fact that my last win was so nail-biting. I'm just willing to take it easy here. She'll kill a bluegill warrior. Will she kill thing? Okay, so my cheekiness didn't get punished. I'm gonna think carefully here. If that's mirror entity, yeah, let's check for mirror entity. I don't want. I don't want to give her a dark iron dwarf. All right, it is a mirror entity. So basically, this three mana spell is gonna get to kill that thing. Um, do I use Demon Fire? Actually, I will use Demon Fire on the assumption that that card is usually bad. So you might as well use it while you have the chance. Well, I don't know. This is going all right. She's got six cards to my four, but I'm at max health, so I can life tap freely and catch up on cards, and she's at half health. She has not had Arcane Missile or Arcane Explosion or Arcane anything all game. She's probably got, like, Fireballs and Polymorphs that she just can't use against these these guys. She's getting card advantage again from her hero ability, but I'm getting card advantage from mine. So if you think about it, she's getting card advantage, I'm getting card advantage. Mine is costing me health, but so is hers, because my minions are hitting her before they before they die. Let's shoot that. Swing, swing, and pass the turn. I could have coin life tapped, but that seemed a bit silly. So she needs a flame strike here to hang in there, and she's got it. All right. I think I've used up all my charge creatures. I saw all my wolf riders and all of my, uh, and, and my, th oh, sorry, all my bluegill warriors and my wolf rider. All right, here we go. Glad I kept the coin. So we're going to go ahead and ogre up. 
So she needs a Fireball or a Polymorph right now, which she probably has, because there has been no tar good targets for those. If she has the Flame Strike and then the Polymorph and the Fireball, she probably wins. But if miraculously she doesn't have it, she could lose here. I mean, if this, well, if this thing gets to attack her, she pretty much does lose. Because I got the Dark Iron Dwarf and Soulfire for the kill. So she needs a Fireball or Polymorph to kill this right now. What to do? What and that'll be pretty much her entire turn. It'll be six of her eight mana killing this thing. Oh, wow! Fascinating. No Polymorph, no Fireball. Does she have a Frostbolt to at least freeze this? She does. Wow, well, that's pretty well played. I do have a Silence that would let me attack with this. Alas, I didn't find it. Hmm. What I'm going to do here is the fall. I'm going to play this to heal that up. I'm going to play this just to get the body on the table, and I'm going to use a Soul Fire to hit this Azure Drake. So the thing is, the problem she's facing now is this is a 6-6. She can either kill this with a single target removal, leaving these alive, or she can kill these two with Flame Strike and leave this alive. So the best card she could have is actually Cone of Cold or Blizzard or Frost Nova to freeze my team. But this this makes it difficult for her to get get out of her sticky situation. I can also Life Tap freely. Well, she has Polymorph, but that's almost half her mana gone. And she has another Polymorph. <laughs> All right. So, um, I've got five damage to hit her with, thanks to these sheep. Oh, corruption. That's good. I'm glad that happened. Might as well play that out. If she has a flame strike, she'll clear my board, but I can keep life tapping. My life total's so high. Got plenty of time to fish for my Argent commanders to race her down for the kill. I am actually running out of burn potential, though. She doesn't have Flame Strike or Blizzard. Does she have Cone of Cold? No. Ah, this is nice. All right. So we have to kill that Fen Creeper, unfortunately. Let's Life Tap first. Sunwalker. I think the Sunwalker is better than the Pit Lord. So let's drop this, because why not? Let's kill the Fen Creeper, and then we're going to beat her with some sheep. So this thing will get to kill my Senjin before dying. But the Sunwalker could be good if she doesn't have a third Polymorph or a Silence for dealing with it. She pretty much needs her own big Taunter here to... Well, she had a Fen Creeper, which is a big Taunter. She needs more big Taunters to survive. Because this thing, even just the fact that it's four power, is extremely significant at this particular stage of the game. By this particular, I mean the stage where she has almost no health and is completely dead. Oh my god. So she freezes the Sunwalker. Does she have an arcane explosion or something? To get rid of both sheep? No. Now, if I silence this, I will attack with it. Um, it'll lose the Divine Shield and the Taunt. Alright, let's play Knight... Well, let me Life Tap first, see what I get. Harvest Golem. Alright, let's do this. Let's play the Pit Lord. Fling a knife. Good. Her face is where I wanted it to go. We're going to hit her with the sheep. She really shouldn't be able to burn me out with this taunter in the way. And I've got some serious beef on the board threatening to kill her. Three, three cards, of course, a mage could answer it. Cone of Cold would do wonders. Frost Nova Blizzard. But uh, she's in trouble. Okay, so she's going to throw that away to get a card. Maybe fishing for a Blizzard or a Cone of Cold to stay alive. She could ping the sheep and Cone of Cold down the middle, and then she'd freeze my whole team. Acolyte's not going to do it. And then she's going to ping the Acolyte to draw another card, but at this point she only has one mana left. Unless she gets a mirror image. Actually, a mirror image wouldn't save her, so she just loses. Well, would a mirror image have saved her? Actually, it would have saved her. Uh, sorry, a mirror Im I apologize. A mirror image would have saved her, I would have, because the sheep isn't big enough to kill the images. So if she had a mirror image, she could have lived for a turn, and maybe even killed me, because this is a lot of power, and... Uh... Let's see, I could have played, I could have hit a mirror image with the sheep. Dread Inferno would have killed the mirror image off. Ah, and then the knife juggler could have killed the other mirror image and this would have hit her. So yes, with the Dread Inferno top deck, I did win. Okay, so that's it. That's our eighth win. Very hairy going. You know what I'm going to say? I've had some bad luck recently. I'm going to say that this run is like some good luck swinging its way back around to me. Some of those games were awfully close. Like the one where I top decked a Wolf Rider to win the turn before I probably would have been killed by Pyroblast. 
so I, I guess I'll kind of confess to what I always say to people who complain about bad luck is that, you know, if you really believe that you lost a bad luck, then keep playing. Because if it really was luck, then you'll get good luck and you'll win some. So you can see it, you know, here. If you watched my stream on Saturday, it's pretty unlucky. I got, you know, two five-win runs and a four-win run. Or sorry, a five-win run and two four-win runs. It kind of sucked. And then here we go. We're up to eight wins here. Might even do better if we get lucky against this Shaman. But the luck is kind of going around. But because I'm a skilled player, you know, my luck is hovering, you know, between four wins and eight wins or so. As opposed to between one win and four wins, which is where it is if you're bad at this game. All right, unfortunately, if I had mulliganed one more card, I would have actually had this on turn one. That's a big difference, not having this on the board. I'm not going to be able to play it anytime soon either, so that's kind of unfortunate. Stormforge Axe is extremely unfortunate. That is just the worst. God, all right. It's going to be one of those games, huh? So I could life tap and play this, or I'll play the Panther. I'm going to play the Panther. I think it's worth it. So let's say I hit him in the face and then he Stormforged Axes it. That means this thing dealt eight damage, and I can try to race him out. Seems like I'm always racing against shamans. I don't know why. Shamans are not a particularly great class to race against. Why do people always have really, like, top-notch three drops? It's just absolutely ridiculous. Like, top-of-the-line three drops. Nothing but Harvest Golems and Scarlet Crusaders all day. God, so even if I defend Revargus this, it still gets killed by the Scarlet Crusader. I don't have Mortal Coil ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to Life Tap here. Ah, we got Mortal Coil. All right, well, let's do the following. I'm going to play this guy. Will... If I leave these two alone, I, they'll die to Forked Lightning, which is unfortunate. I don't want that to happen. But I also don't want to attack this and let the Scarlet Crusader kill the Panther. Where's this Divine Shield going to go, though? Yeah, whatever. Let's, let's, get the, let's get the beads. I mean, they still both die to Forked Lightning. At least I got four damage through. Oh my god, there's one mana left over for Fork Lightning. Ha, he doesn't have it, thank god. So he chose to actually take damage there. Pretty ballsy, if you ask me. Pretty ballsy. Well, I think the Knife Juggler makes a lot of sense. No matter which minion I hit, it's good. If I don't hit any minion at all, that's, what it, that's where it sucks. Okay, so we hit that. Fine, that's great. So we'll get to use Mortal Quill. Potentially. First kill. Let's swing on by. And the question is, do I use Soul Fire to kill this Flesh Eating Ghoul? I could lose the Mortal Quill, which would suck. You know what? This Mortal Quill, the Scarlet Crusader is going to kill the Knife Juggler, so I am actually going to Soul Fire this thing. And yep, I just called it. That's actually the second time this arena run, losing a Mortal Quill to Soul Fire. No, no, sorry. I was thinking of a game I played earlier in Constructed where that happened. That didn't actually happen in this arena. That's some poor commentary. Okay, so he's got a pretty serious card advantage, but I've got a life advantage, so I can life tap my way back into things, potentially. If he uses this axe to kill the knife juggler, his health is very perilous indeed. He's going to use a Scarlet Crusader to kill that. Is he going to fork lightning now? Remember, it's only turn five. It's one of those games where, like, I've been playing stuff all game, and he has, so it feels like it's super late, but it's not that late. It's only turn five. He doesn't actually have that much mana to deal with things. He's got six cards and a weapon. I've got four total cards. Drops a Taunt Totem. Well, I should be able to kill it. That's fine. He is going to take three damage to kill the Knife Juggler. Which makes sense. He's going to take that damage anyway. He's going to heal up. I'm not that happy about that because it doesn't die to Demon Fire. Luckily, it does die to Argent Commander. That was a really good top deck. So we're going to kill that Taunt Totem. And I am not going to be cheeky. I'm just going to go ahead and kill that. We'll play a little bit fair here. He could outplay Fire Elemental to kill this thing. And then that, that would just be really good. He has the Fire Elemental. Motherfucker. So Demon Fire being awful here, even with the help of this, I can't kill the Fire Elemental. But with the Defender of Argus and this, I can. Um, But I'm actually not going to do either. We're going to go for the face. It's time to race. So if he hits either one of my minions, the Demon Fire will finish it off. And I can hopefully keep on swinging for damage. Hopefully. He has! the hex oh my god it is ridiculous oh he has earth shock for this are you goddamn kidding me so that'll kill it because it silences it back to a 2-1 are you goddamn kidding me i cannot believe this so i've already used soul fire so and i've already used an argent commander so this is a problem luckily this is a pretty good drop because it lets me kill that raging organ 
and then it hits him for one damage, which might be relevant. I'm just lacking burn potential at the moment. Oh my god. The hexes every shaman. It's Hex Travaganza. Oh, that's the title of this arena. <laughs> Hex Travaganza. I'm pretty sure I'm not the first person to come up with that. But... Oh fuck, does he guys seriously have another Hex for this? Oh, he's gonna two for one with lightning bolts, I take it. Yes, he is. So he could actually do that because he's that far ahead on cards. Alright, does he have any more things to play? Nope. Okay. Sunwalker, very good here. Let's life tap first, though. Stranglethor Tiger could also be very good. Alright, well, I bet he would have used a hex if he had it, so I'm hoping he doesn't have any more hexes. The problem is that this taunt totem really protects his fire elemental, giving him more time to find an answer for Sunwalker. Which I do not like at all. But I can still keep life tapping to catch up on cards, which is nice. He's, he had two cards he didn't like. He then played the card he just drew. 7-7 seven, seven is pretty good. And he's gonna hang tight. Bluegill Warrior saves my bacon here. Let's life tap up. Another Bluegill Warrior. Hmm. Well, we can kill a Taunt Totem. And then think. Do I kill this Fire Elemental? Or do I just hit him in the face? I mean, I could hit him in the face for 6 down to 5. Oh my gosh. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the Tiger, so the Tiger's ready to go. And then I'm going to try to kill him next turn with Blue Girl Warrior plus Tiger. This is representing lethal, he needs to have a taunt or else he loses. Just to be these two cards of mine. I've already used Soul Fire, already used one Argent Commander, hopefully that's not a taunt totem. Good. So now I'm threatening lethal, he has to have life gain or taunt. Or somehow deal with this Tiger, but I'm not even sure. Well, he could play two Lightning Storms to kill that Tiger, but that's it. It's the only way he could kill it. That I can think of anyway. So he needs taunt or life gain or he's dead. Well played. He plays bloodlust, which does not help him. It does let him serve. Oh my gosh, is he actually? Oh no, though I have a taunt. Oh my gosh, it's worth noting he actually would have killed me. This is 1922 uh, damage. That that Sunwalker saved my life. Now he could have actually. Spared himself a turn for us from his perspective, killing this bluegill warrior with the frost wolf warlord. And I'm not sure why he didn't do that because I could have gotten him down to two. I mean, it's not a guarantee that I would have killed him. Interesting choice there. Whatever. Well played, and that's our ninth win. That Sunwalker, man. It, it, yeah, it saved my life. So what I don't, I don't remember what it was. It was Sunwalker or some other good thing. No, it wasn't. Never mind. It was Sunwalker or two warlock trash rares, a Felguard or a. Void Terror. So yeah, that was that was not that was not a particularly genius draft choice. But yeah, um, Sunwalker saved me because he actually had. Uh, let's see. Seven plus six is thirteen. Thirteen plus nine is twenty-two, and then twenty-four damage. Plus he had a Rockbiter weapon. No, he didn't have a Rockbiter weapon. Never mind. No, he had he had just twenty twenty-four damage. All right, Valera. My name is Joe. Uh, hopefully this will be used for removal of some sort. Against a rogue, it's very different. I will play this happily against a mage or a druid, causing them to use mana to kill it. But against a rogue, she could have a dagger left over from a previous turn, making this a whole lot less enticing of a play. Got my infiltrator. I'm not that lucky getting these. I do have two in the deck. Hopefully this is a 3-2, though I doubt it. Oh, man. Mad Bomber, the last barrel! You know what? I always get killed by the last barrel. It's the last one. Like, the odds are overwhelming that it will kill it. I grant that. But the fact that it's the last barrel, that's just... Ah, that kills me. So anyway, that Mad Bomber was a two-for-one, so... Starting off with pretty lame... Stuff. Stuff. That's a good word. Can I get a Mortal Coil? Nope. Alright, we'll play Panther here. And then next turn, play the Knife Juggler and the Fairy Dragon. Hopefully the knife will hit this. In that case, I'll be lucky and get back up on card advantage. Hopefully she plays a Dagger, meaning I have 50-50 odds. All right, 50-50, here we go. This is, this is a huge coin flip, because if I don't kill this Blue Girl Warrior with the Knife Fling, then, then the Blue Girl Warrior will kill my Knife Juggler. Now, I can actually play a Pit Lord, but nope, we're going to go for it. Please, please. Oh my gosh, that was huge. I screwed up. Given that I'm attacking with this panther, I should have put the fairy dragon in the middle to play around. Betrayal. If she has betrayal, I lose a minion for no reason. That could actually cost me the game. I I put the panther in the middle because it was like, 
I left the panther in the middle because it was like a stealth minion, you know. Luckily, she doesn't have the betrayal, but still, that could have been really terrible. She doesn't have a backstab either. That's good news. All right, well, it's a little bit dangerous against a rogue to play a pit lord, but I've got the sunwalker here, so that's fine. And actually, life-wise, we're pretty similar. Well, the Sunwalker does die to assassinate, but I'm gambling she'd use an assassinate on a 5-6. It's turn 5. Keep having these games with lots of activity early on. It's only turn 5, though, so this 5-6 is kind of gigantic. She has 6 cards to my 5, so to B6. I can't life type anymore, probably. Or at least I hope not to. Even with this heal, I'd rather not do that. They are banned to my command. Okay, that's a bit scary, because this means her dagger starts dealing lots of damage. What just happened? She just hit the knife juggler. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't think that was a good move. Let's see, 511. Wait a minute. 511. No, sorry, this is wrong. 5 plus 4 is 9. <laughs> 9, 12. I can get her down to 2 health. So many possibilities. You know, that's a, that's a bit risky. Let's put the Sunwalker in the middle here. Luckily, the knife juggler hit her face. I don't care about this being enraged because this, this this is in the way, and if she hits my minions with an empowered dagger, she's gonna die. But um, just just I like I like that it dealt an extra damage, which makes it harder for her to get out of the situation. So that was a weird game. You may wonder like how is it that this just I ran away with it so bad, and partly is that her early turns were pretty weak actually. She did have that epic mad bomber, but then um she, then then the bluegill warrior, then she kind of passed on turn four just playing a farseer or something and. Um, I kept playing stuff. Anyway, it was a really good um, knife fling to kill the Blue Warrior. If that hadn't happened, I would have probably had to trade the Panther for it. That would have been like at least eight less damage over the course of the game. Yeah, it would have been a very different story of a lovely lady. All right, so 10 wins. I haven't been here, gosh, in a long time, it feels like. Let's take a quick look at my stats. How long ago was it that I've actually got to 10 wins? I actually don't have my runs showing sequentially. I have them sequentially by class, but not like by run. So two Warlock runs ago, I had 11. Two Mage runs ago, I had 10. And three Hunter runs ago, I had 10. I have not made it to 10 wins in a long time. I'm still doing all right average-wise, but um, yeah, 10 wins is just uh, not, not, that, not that common for me. Did this game crash? Um, button's frozen, but it is slowing down. Okay, so we're, we're good. All right, who's up? The priest. Ooh, that's nice. So a new class for the Serena. Boy Benny the Priest. This looks good. So this will kill some things. I actually had a request. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot about this. I actually had a request a little while ago. Somebody said that I kept mentioning my Don't Play a Northshire Cleric song, but she had never actually heard it. So here it is, folks. This is everybody's favorite Irish drinking song. Don't play a Northshire cleric. Oh, don't play a Northshire cleric. Don't play a Northshire cleric. Don't play a Northshire. Don't play a Northshire cleric. Do 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 do. Do but do but don't play a Northshire cleric. Do but do but don't play a Northshire cleric. Do but do but don't play a Northshire. Don't play a Northshire cleric. Do but do but do but do but do. Oh, I once knew a man who played a Northshire cleric. That man has since been gored by a donkey. Do but don't play North Shire cleric. Do but don't play North Shire cleric. Do but don't play North Shire. Don't play North Shire cleric. Do but do but boop. That's the song. Anyway, Frostwolf Grunt. Much rather see that than a North Shire cleric. First of all, because I can kill it. Second of all, because he used his coin. So good start here, and we've got three, four, five coming down the pike potentially. I might need to sneak this mortal coil in there somewhere. Ah, crazed alchemist. That's all right. Glad to see that it's not finding a use here. I could, of course, play Wolf Rider to kill the crazed alchemist. That would be extra safe. I'm being a little bit ballsy trying to go for this kill because he could play Shattered Sun Cleric or something. But I feel all right about it since I have a Mortal Coil to kill it off. Power Word Shield. Well, that's interesting. It, it doesn't really help either of us. So I, it, it stops me from using Mortal Coil on this. And it gives him a card, but it doesn't let him kill the golem, so I think that's all right. I'm all right with this. It's going to Shadow Word Pain my golem. I see. And then that way, he'll finish it off with the Christ Alchemist, staying just above Mortal Coil range. Fair enough. Well, I'm okay with this because now I can play Senjin. Still be threatening to kill this, and he's used a Shadow Word Pain on a golem. 
If he has another Shadow Word Pain, then it'll kill the Sengen, sure. But, you know, can't play around everything. He doesn't have it. He does have a Taz Dangles. Bojangles. Alright, now I've got a couple of options here. I could either Soul Fire. I swear to God, the text of this card is just deal 4 damage, discard Mortal Coil from your hand. Um, and then if it don't deal discard Mortal Coil, I will be able to finish this off, draw a card, kill it. Or I could play the Tiger, try to kill it next turn. You know what? Really? Only 1 in 4 odds. I'm not going to be superstitious. Yeah, alright, that's fine. So we lost a pretty good 6 drop, but there's more where that came from. We kill that. We kill that. We play this. We're ready to ride. Play a Worgen Infiltrator. Holy Nova now will kill two, but not this. However, he'll then have four cards to my three, so I guess that would still be good for him. You know, actually, I'd probably rather see Holy Nova than like a really, really good five drop. But um, anyway, man, that arrow is so messed up. Is he just going to heal himself? That's what I would hope for. Doomsayer? Who plays Doomsayer? Well, I can kill it with if I get an Argent Commander. Pit Lord. Shit can't kill this thing that is just unbelievably bad so i can't play minions so i might as well life tap although i really can't draw anything that would let me kill it oh my gosh if i had more mana i could have actually shot this to death like if this had been my draw for the turn i could have killed this fucking doomsayer oh my gosh this is like several times now that i've been wrecked by doomsayer i still maintain that the card is bad but i know i have a rule if a card keeps being good against you yada yada but it's also been really really terrible on many occasions he was very lucky I didn't draw Stormpike Commando. Alright, Stormpike Commando will get to kill this Knife Juggler unless it gets buffed, and it won't. Unfortunately, it will then die to a Harvest Golem. So we're kind of going back and forth here. Okay. Different option. Yes. I'm going to play Pit Lord here and Blue Gold Warrior. So, basically, this way, I still kill the Knife Juggler. But instead of having this, which dies, I actually get to keep a minion on the board. Unless, of course, he has Shadow or Death or some other form of hijinks. And even after the self-damage, I am equal to him on life, and we're pretty equal on cards. Oh, that's annoying. So this will actually kill my Pit Lord, rather tragically. Ah, but Sunwalker will protect my Pit Lord. So, okay, what I'm going to do is life tap here. It's one of the final times I can life tap. I have this really awkward hand where I cannot play two minions at the same time. And I'm actually going to hit him in the face. There's really no point in damaging that golem. So we'll hit him in the face. He can use the Golem to pop the Divine Shield, use the Temple Enforcer to kill this off. Then, if he doesn't heal the Temple Enforcer, I can shoot it to death with my Stormpike. If he does heal the Temple Enforcer, I can go Cry River. I guess I can shoot this thing. Oh my god, are you goddamn kidding me? Well, back-to-back -back Temple Enforcers are very difficult to deal with if you aren't already winning, so he's now going to just race me down, I think. Spellbreaker... Ugh, doesn't help. Shit. <sighs> These mana costs are awkward. He's got 12, 14 damage here. Can't really race him down. But I can't kill his stuff either. Alright, we're going to do this. We're going to hit him. We're going to play Boulder Fist Ogre. I'm not going to life tap. I actually don't know how I could possibly win this at this point. Like, what I would have to draw to win it. Those Temple Enforcers were just amazingly good. Ah, oh, man. Like, he had six drops and I had six drops, but somehow mine just got outclassed by his. Oh, God. All right, is he going to go straight for my face, or will he, will he pause to kill the Pit Lord? Actually, he, he has to kill stuff, because this is 11 damage. No one would be insane enough to leave it alive. I've already used a soul fire. I don't think I can win this. And he is actually just going to go ahead and kill my stuff. Well, I don't have any way of killing everything because I didn't take shadow flame. Demon fire. Oh, man. Okay. Well, we're going to shoot this thing. And demon fire this thing. But why am I still playing? Was this 11 15 damage? I don't think I can win. I was thinking of silencing this, but then it's still dealing me for 4 damage. Ah. Uh, I think I might have misplayed that game somehow. It felt like it was going fine. Maybe I shouldn't have used Soul Fire on this engine. Maybe I should have just uh, played a Tiger. Kept the Soul Fire around for later. It would have been useful later, that's for sure. He's also got the Tiger. Okay, well, this, this is hopeless. I don't have any outs. 
Shadow Flame would be my only out. I don't know, I, I didn't draft it when I saw it. I took an Argent Commander instead. Alright, that's well played. Don't even need to life tap here, I know that I've got nothing. Back to back Temple Enforcers. I mean, I had Sunwalker, Boulder, Pistogre, it's just he kind of got the jump on me with those. Yeah, it's too bad. So, anyway, 10 wins is pretty good. Pretty good uh, run. Haven't been there in a while. So, if you enjoyed this video, please like and or subscribe if you want to stick around. Stick around. Let's see our prizes. I'm actually very interested to see the prize. Before the patch, before the game was released, a couple of 10 win runs gave crazy rewards. But for the most part, they sucked. So we'll see if that has changed at all. It's, well, it's kind of changed. 245 is pretty good. And uh, 100 dust I'm pretty happy with. Because I need to collect dust. I need about 13,000 more dust so I can craft all the missing legendaries in the game. Ooh, we got an epic. I think I have two of those. There are a lot of epics that I need. A lot. And I'm pretty sure not only A is Bestial Wrath a garbage card, but B... I already have it. Ah, oh, I do. Well, that's sad. So it's like I got 100 dust for dusting that epic instead of 400 dust for not having to craft a missing epic. Still, though, better that than a regular common card, which is what it otherwise would have been. We got a golden mage. There are a few rares I'm missing. That is not one of them. And whatever, since um, you're sticking around here, if you're, you're curious about how my collection is going, so we can see epics. Um, I still need, and I've got all the druid ones. I still need a snake trap. Got the wrong hunter epic. I still need an ice block. I still need two swords of justice. That's a good one too, so it sucks I don't have it. I need a, a cabal shadow priest. I need preparation. I need an earth elemental and a doom hammer. I need a pit lord. Got a golden one, but I need one more. Brawl and shield slam. Not to mention like crab, Hunter, Blood Knight, War Leader, two Captains, a Faceless Manipulator, two Molten Giants. I need so many epics, but I got Bestial Wrath. That's, well, that, that's life. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching again. Please like and or subscribe. The next arena is going to be Shaman, Warlock, or Priest, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.